Today I've been running a day-long workshop here at uh, Imperial College as part of uh, the creative design course that the civil engineers do in the civil engineering department. Um, it's the first of uh, four weeks of creative design that they do over the first two years. It's a course that's led by Mike Cook and Sunday Popaola. Um, my role is to support them introducing specific elements around uh, teaching creativity, uh, team dynamics and problem-based learning. My role is part of my visiting professorship funded by the Royal Academy of Engineering and so I thought it would be appropriate and useful if I shared with everybody what we were trying to do. This video is specifically for people who might also be teaching uh, these sorts of subjects to civil engineers elsewhere. So. What did we do? Just reading through my little script here. Uh, in the past, we have drip-fed elements of creativity teaching or problem-based learning or team dynamics through the four creative design weeks that the students have. Now, the challenge we found is that, uh, that those extra elements get, in a sense, pushed to one side and sometimes ignored by the students as they push towards the big deadline that they're trying to finish. So what we decided to do this time was put uh, all of the creative elements into a single day at the start of the course, give the students that sort of toolbox, get them to think about how they can apply it themselves to their own work, and then we'll support them during the week looking for them to be reflective about how they're actually using those to help deliver their deadline. So. Um, we decided to put all the creativity into one day, and given that it is supposed to be the first in the, in the course, uh, the, first, the first day in the course, we decided to try and do something that was a little bit exciting. So what we did was actually a mashup of various days that we've done in the past, and it went something like this. Uh, we split the students up into 12 groups of eight or nine. There's roughly 95 to 100 uh, students in the cohort. And the brief was that they should imagine uh, test and sorry, imagine build and test a magnificent flying machine. So we've done paper planes before, large scale paper planes, testing those, but we wanted something with a little bit more uh, latitude for creativity. So we broadened it out and called it magnificent flying machines. And as we'll see, that seems to have actually turned out reasonably well. Um, the concept is to create a sort of funnel where students initially work in groups of twos or threes and research and develop ideas and then after lunch they have to decide in, in larger groups of eight or nine which of their three ideas they're going to choose. So we want to create a bit of creative tension and hopefully see that resolved through various techniques that we gave them. So we started off by introducing the model of the Kaleidoscope, which I use with lots of different sort of groups of learners. It's the concept that ideas are really uh, new elements uh, formed between existing things that we know. So it's like using a kaleidoscope, the elements are the little bits of glass, and when we turn the kaleidoscope, uh, it forms new connections, those are the news ideas, and I like to use the pun kaleidoscope. So I made that point to the students, and the first thing we did was help them build their kaleidoscope, fill it up with elements, fill it up with useful information. So they did things like uh, look up different flying machines on the internet, they brainstormed different meanings of magnificent. Uh, some of them started making little models and started to think about how that revealed useful information to them. Others actually went to the Science Museum just down the road to the flight gallery on the top floor and looked at different models that, that people have made. Uh, so one of the things I was emphasising was they shouldn't just find the information out but gather it and collate it and share it as a team because it's very easy to gather information and keep it but the point I want to make is that the creative system is only built when that information is, is shared in the wider group. After an hour, I asked them to step away from their tables and then reflect on which of the techniques they had used that morning uh, they might find useful, basically to try and get them to think about actually doing research as part of their work in the, uh, in the later week. One of the principles I told them at the first, which is the one that I got from uh, that I, uh, somebody I've collaborated with last year, uh, uh, Soren Willett in Denmark, is the idea of exemplarity. The idea that in any learning, uh, you should look for the thing which you can transfer to another project. So I was saying to them, sure, today is about paper aeroplanes, but you need to find the exemplarity. What can you take from today and apply it to other courses and apply it to the rest of your learning? So. Uh, they took a quick break and then we went in and started to do uh, what I call turn the kaleidoscope. So that's actually start to generate ideas, form connections by applying various stimuli. Now I gave them three stimuli from the ones I often use. One was to ask what if, so what if we change an element of the brief into something completely different, how does that stimulate a new idea? The second one was to uh, change material, so if they've been considered doing something from paper and string, what if they switched to using a completely different material? And thirdly, it was to either model it at a different scale or draw it from a different perspective if they've been working on sketches. 
Now, as it turned out, a lot of the students had already developed ideas or started to think of ideas in the first part. So it made me realise that these, these techniques, these turning the kaleidoscope techniques, are probably best applied when the students um, haven't yet or haven't yet got an idea, or if they've already got one idea but are struggling to come up with another idea. And it's certainly something that comes up when I do training for people who are waiting to sit the uh, Institution of Structural Engineers exam. They are looking for techniques to, uh, um, techniques to come up with a second idea. So, anyway, so the, on reflection, the students didn't need those so much, and they just piled ahead and developed lots of ideas. And one of the reflections that Mike Cook had was that they were really creative. These students were really, really playful with this brief, much more playful than when we asked them to do a straightforward paper aeroplane design. Um, another point from earlier on, I was going to say that uh, with the reflection parts, I asked them to reflect again and to think about what techniques they could take forward. And I think it would be useful if I gave them a sort of little card where they could write down technique, how they used it, how they could apply it in future, so that when they're roving around the lab, working in different places, they can just pick up this little card and jot down their thoughts as they work through, and then we can take that away and work with it later on. Uh, so uh, they stop for lunch. Uh, I emphasised the importance of lunch to the creative process. They laughed, but I emphasised it again when they came back. Uh, lunch is a clearly defined slot here now in these creative projects, which in the past we've allowed them to work through lunch, but I think it's good to force them to stop. Everyone stopped, and interestingly, of the 100 people here, nobody stuck behind to carry on. They all, they all st went off for lunch, which is great. Um, after lunch, we started to get them to talk about feedback. So I explained that feedback is a really important part of the creative process. It's a great way that teams can collaborate and work together. The way in which they give feedback to each other uh, can either really support uh, interaction or if you give feedback in an ineffective way, uh, it can really stifle creativity. So we suggested that there were basically two things they needed for good feedback. One was a clear set of criteria or a clear definition of what it was that they were trying to achieve, a sort of shared understanding. And then the second part was a a, a sort of simple, uh, non-judgmental way of communicating our feelings to one another. So the idea is, first of all, you have some sort of script of some sort of shared set of agreements. You're saying, well, this is what we're trying to do. And then you give feedback on the basis of our individual's actions contributing to that shared set of aims. So what we did was we got them to, to uh, define what was their... Uh, their sort of definition of magnificence for their magnificent, magnificent flying machine, um, what, what would their project look like if it was going to be successful? So that was written down and shared, and that was a bit of a negotiation. Um, we then gave them the simple following script, which goes like this. Uh, person A says, can I give you some feedback? And then person B says, yes, hopefully. And then person A says, okay, well, um, I see the idea that you've developed here is like this, and I feel that it doesn't uh, quite address this aspect of the brief. What do you think? And then the other person is, rather than, supposed, rather than defending themselves, is supposed to, um, is supposed to uh, actually uh, show interest in the other, person's, uh, the other person's position. So this is a sort of feedback mechanism that we tried with the students here in, in, in the past, and my, my, my colleague uh, Nick Zeno uh, has, has influenced my thinking on this quite a lot. Um, this is about um, giving students a way to talk to each other in a non-aggressive way uh, against some clearly set out criteria. Interestingly, in the past, we've struggled to get this across to the students, or certainly I have. They've, 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 they've not wanted to give feedback, and today it felt like they took it on board. Some of them said, well, it feels like a bit, bit stilted to use this sort of language of, can I give you some feedback? This is how I feel. But when I said to them, look, dealing with conflict is a really difficult thing, um, and these are tools that are going to help you. They seemed much more keen to try it out. So we did that for about half an hour. They agreed their own criteria for magnificence, and then using uh, sort of this feedback technique, the idea was they were supposed to select one idea that would be the idea that they would take forward. They then spent two hours building these models. And I have to say, flying machines included in this group uh, parachutes, included catapulted devices, included some people trying to figure out how they could use fire to generate hot air and buoyancy, some people doing classic paper aeroplanes, some people even did uh, um, some sort of spinning devices. I'm very delighted with this one here, which I've got, which I think is a sort of spinner. I'm delighted because it has some of the learning criteria for the course on the outside. So um, what do we have here? You only learn when you do difficult things. Uh, reflection tailors the glove of theory to the hand of experience. 
That's from Donald Shearn, and I like to quote that in these sessions. And finally, Soren's quote, look for exemplarity. So this group, oh dear, I've lost my headphones. This group was one of the best, uh, for me, one of the most magnificent ones. So uh, they spent two hours uh, building their models, and then we did a final reflection. So they, they stepped away, and then they answered three reflective questions in their groups. We actually got them to work at a neighbouring table's table so that they weren't tempted to carry on working on their models. Good uh, top tip there. So they went in and they reflected on their work and they answered, asked three questions. One, what challenges do they foresee they will face as a group in collaborating creatively for the rest of the week? That's what challenges do they see as a group in collaborating effectively? And then secondly, which of the techniques that we've just discussed today do they think they could adopt to overcome that challenge? And then thirdly, what uh, will be the evidence that they have successfully overcome that challenge? How will they know if they've done well? Basically, a three-step process. What's the challenge? What's the tool? What's the evidence you're looking for? And the idea is to anchor all of the creative thinking techniques that we've been talking about earlier on in the day uh, and to align them with specific challenges that they're facing, and then finally to look for evidence that they're being applied. So we spent about half an hour doing that, and we got each team to email us their shortlist of challenges, techniques, and evidence requirements. Then for us as a facilitation team during the week, we'll be going back and talking to them and saying, okay, so you had this challenge, you've been applying, say, this feedback technique, how are you getting on with it? Is it working? Do you need to change your criteria? So what we're doing here is we're integrating sort of an action learning approach into the creative design teaching. Uh, so finally they did their, 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 their launch, uh, which was fun and a bit of a farce, some teams. Uh, so what we asked them was, what were their criteria for magnificence? And then we measured them against their magnificence. Uh, some went for distance, some went for beauty, some went for could they come up with a plane that did a complete loop the loop um, and uh, most of them didn't go quite as well as planned and that's fine because that bit's just a bit of fun and I think it emphasises the fact that, um, that actually this is all about applying the learning rather than achieving the top result. Had it been about going the furthest then I think the learning outcomes about creativity would have been lost. Um, but we shall see later on in the week whether any of that has been retained and I could be wrong but we shall see. Final thoughts. This has been a really playful workshop. I've really enjoyed it and it's been really delightful to see uh, these students not worry too much about getting it right and actually think more about how they can do something unusual and what are the processes for doing that. Uh, one thing was interesting was that each team was supposed to uh, test one design. In the end, quite a few teams had one or two, which showed that they hadn't really used the feedback techniques to successfully decide on one technique. Uh, what, sorry, on one model to use. So if, in a sense, if there had been disagreement about which one to build, they hadn't actually managed to resolve it. So that's something that I think working with the, with the, with the uh, GTA team the, the, here, the other, the other facilitators, we need to be closer on it, checking the dynamics in each of the groups. And finally, I have to say, and I'm very embarrassed about this, there's actually a huge pile of waste. And given that quite a lot of glue gunning was done, uh, it's going to be quite difficult to separate some of those materials. So I'm rather ashamed of that. And I, don't th I think I'll be trying to think about how they can separate their waste at the end. I'll definitely run this workshop again. If you've been watching this quite now long rambling video and you try something like this yourself, I would love to know how you get on. That's all from me. Thanks. Bye.